Hi folks, false color images look really cool. They're derived from satellite imagery. Um, they can also be used for analysis purposes, but mostly they just look super cool and it can be something fun that you want to try with your own satellite imagery to make maps for your specific area of interest. I'm going to show you how you can do it in QGIS with this video. Right now I'm just looking at some false color images uh, from Google Images and there are some that look really cool. I especially like this one of the Yukon River Delta. But we'll go in and show you how to do this in QGIS. So let's start by heading over to QGIS. And we need some Landsat data. I have some that I've already downloaded that I've used in previous tutorials. Now if you need to learn how to download Landsat data, I'll put a link in the cards up above. Um, I'm going to start by adding in some data. All right, so I have analysis ready data from Landsat. This is Landsat 8 data. If you're using a different form of satellite imagery, this could change for you. So like I said, these band numbers are going to respond to land, correspond to Landsat 8. If you're using something else, you'll just need to find the correct band combinations for that specific imagery. Now I'm going to add in bands 1 through 7 of the Landsat data. I'm going to do it one at a time, starting at band 1. Now this is going to be important to get this right later. So I'm going to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, I've got those added in. I'm going to go back over to the Layers tab, and I'm going to come and just slide this down. Okay, so I have those bands in there. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to create a virtual raster, and I'll show you why. So I want to display these in color. Right now it's just black and white. But let's say I go into band one. I go click on this band, or sorry, let's go to let's go to band seven actually. It's on top. We'll go to band seven. And let's say I want to display this instead of single band gray. I want to display this um, as a multi-band color. To display color, we have to have three different bands to display an actual full color image. So if I click on this, you can see band one. I can give it I can give it band seven, but I only have band 7 available, so if I click OK here, it just gives it red. So it doesn't really do anything for me. Let's go back and change this back to single band gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual raster, which is going to put all these bands into one multi-band raster, and then I can change the color combinations. Now the way to do that is we're just going to go into raster here, and we're going to come uh, into miscellaneous and we're going to click on this build virtual raster. So I'm going to click on this. Um, I'm going to select my input layers. So I'm going to click the dots here. Okay. And I'm going to come down and this is why it's important to add them in in that order because they're going to appear here in the order that you add them in. And it's very important because once you add them in, you're not going to know um, which what the band num what the band number is. So we're going to select these in order, one through seven, and we're going to click OK here. Now we can see we have seven inputs selected. I'm going to make the resolution the highest of those. I'm going to make sure the box is checked to place each input file into a separate band, and then we can save this file. For the purposes of this lesson, I'm just going to save it as a temporary file, um, but you can come save it to a location on disk by clicking Save to File, and then you will have it for later. Okay, so I'm just going to close that, and we'll just keep it temporary for now, and I'm going to click Run. All right, so you can see that this is done running, and I have this virtual raster over here now. So I'm going to click Close. And you can see that now I have a false color image. This is kind of purple and brown, which is really weird looking. It doesn't look real great. But I do have a false color image. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And now that I have this, I can just go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of my other bands just to keep things uh, clean. Okay, we'll drag this out just a little bit. And so this icon right here just indicates this is a virtual layer that only exists in memory and it will be gone once I close QGIS. All right, so let's go through some different raster band combinations that you may want to experiment with. To do that, we'll double click here or right click and go to properties. 
and pull up the symbology tab here on the left side. Now we see we have multi-band colors selected by default. And the way to get true color is to assign red to red, green to green, and blue to blue. If you're not sure what this is, we can go over to um, we can go over to the internet to find out what the Landsat 8 band combinations are. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to type Landsat 8 bands. We'll hit enter. We'll come over to this web page here, and it should give us an idea. Okay, so I come down, and you can see that bands 1, 2, and 3 just say they're visible light. Um, band 4 is red, 5 near infrared, 6 and 7 are short wave infrared. Okay, so we know that blue has the shortest wavelength of visible light, red the longest, and green's in the middle. Um, so this is actually, uh, our, we're going to use 2 for our blue band three for our green band, and four for our red band. You can go check out and look up the wavelengths as they correspond to visible light uh, if you're more interested in that. But we'll do two blue, three green, four red. So let's head back over to QGIS. So red was going to be four, green was three, and blue was two. And when I do that and I click OK, give it a second to update, and you can see there that now I have a true color image. So there is my true color. You can see the water comes out as blue over there and over there. And everything looks about as it should. You can see we have uh, agricultural fields coming out in green, some of these uplands in a brownish tannish color, and you can see the various colors in the mountains. Cool. Now let's go ahead and do a false color uh, infrared value, a near infrared false color. And this one looks pretty cool. It shows vegetation in red, and it's going to show the water very, being very dark generally, which comes out neat. So let's go ahead and double click here. And all we have to do to do this is change our bands around. So we're just going to increase all these by one. We're going to display red um, as near infrared. We're going to display green with the red band, and we're going to display blue with the green band. And we'll click OK. Give it a second to update. And there you can see that our water appears very dark. We get this vegetation showing up in red. So you can see these agricultural fields now are bright red. And you can see we get kind of this grayish color in a lot of the uplands. Um, now, I'm not sure the date of this image. It looks like snow could be up here. I don't know the snow or rock that's showing up uh, in that light, almost white color. OK, so that's one very common false color band combination that you're going to see. Okay, so let's try another one that's going to be similar to this, but it's going to use the actual shortwave infrared, which is uh, band 6 or band 7. We'll start by using, we'll go band 7. So we'll display the shortwave infrared as 7. And um, we'll go green with near infrared, which is 5. And then we'll display green band as blue. And so green is once again 3, so we'll keep that the same. So we've got 7, 5, 3 here. And let's go ahead and click OK. Give it a second. And so you can see there that now we're getting some really weird colors. We once again have this really dark uh, lake over here. And we have some green and red in different places on this one. So that's uh, another common, commonly used uh, false color combination for satellite imagery. Okay, so I've just been playing around a little. And you can see I have 527. And it gives this... Uh, Really interesting color. You got some reds and some purples, and kind of this almost glowing green in parts of the lake over here. Um, so you can see how it's really easy to just create uh, some virtual, or it's not virtual, but some uh, false color images directly in QGIS with satellite imagery. Um, this one I think looks pretty good, where you have that dark blue, and then you get some some green where that vegetation is. Um, so anyway, go ahead, experiment. You can play around with different band combinations to see if there's one that, that pops out what you're looking for in your study area. Remember to check out the tutorials on opensourceoptions.com. I'm going to try to write some tutorials up on these things so that you are able to see um, on the website as well what this looks like.